Welcome to the video for chapter 26 of the Cambridge Introduction to Sanskrit, which is going to tell you about I and U stem nouns and adjectives. In chapter 13, we looked at long I and long U stems. And if you remember, those employed nearly identical endings and they were completely parallel in their internal sandhi. Because of that, we could look at these two different stems together in one chapter. The same is actually the case with short I and short U stems. They have identical endings and their internal sandhi is the same or completely parallel. And that's why they're also discussed together here. What we're going to do is we will first look at I stems, short I stems in detail. And then later we will briefly compare short U stems with them. So, short I stems. There are short I stem nouns and there are adjectives. Short I stem nouns exist in all three genders, masculine, feminine and neuter. And each gender has a separate set of forms. This video will go through these forms by gender. But if you want to uh, have a table that shows all these forms side by side, you can simply go to chapter 26 in the book. Neuter I stem nouns are the most straightforward out of masculine, feminine and neuter short I stems, and that's why we're looking at them first. Now they mostly decline like consonant stems, and that's because in front of endings that begin with a vowel, they insert an N between the stem and the ending. So basically they function like consonant stems. Let's look at the forms of wari, which is a neuter I stem noun meaning water. In the singular, we have nominative, vocative, accusative, wari. So just the stem, no ending. In the other cases in the singular, however, we have endings that all begin with a vowel, namely a, e, ach, ach, i. And in front of these endings, we have an n added between the stem and the ending. Because of the r in wari, the n then retroflects into n. If you don't quite remember that anymore, this was introduced in chapter 6. And so we have the forms wari na, wari ne, wari nach, wari nach, wari ni. In the dual, then, we have the ending e, which we already know from other consonant stem neuters. And in front of this e, we again find the n added, so we have the form wari ni for nominative, vocative, accusative dual. In the instrumental dative ablative dual, we have an ending that begins with a consonant, and this is just straightforwardly added to wari, so we have wari bhyam. The ending for genitive and locative dual begins with a vowel again, and so we again find an N added between the stem and the ending, and so we get wari noch as the genitive and locative dual. The nominative, vocative, accusative plural, warini, um, is basically parallel to the nominative, vocative, accusative plural of short A stems. So, for example, of wanam, we had wanani, and here we have, of not a short a stem, but of a short i stem, a parallel form, warini. Then, in the instrumental dative ablative, we again have endings that begin with a consonant, and so those endings are just added to the stem, very straightforwardly. So we get wari pich and wari piach. Then, in the genitive plural, we have, again, a form that isn't just like a consonant stem, but rather it's like the vowel stem that short I stems actually are. And so we get wa ri nam in parallel to short A stem uh, genitive plurals. So remember, for example, naranam or wananam. Here we have wa ri nam. And then finally, in the locative plural, we have an ending that begins with a consonant. That is just straightforwardly added to the stem, nothing added in between them. And that ending is su, but because wa ri ends in an e, we here get the rookie rule, and so the locative plural is wa ri shu. Up next, masculine i stems. These require the most attention among i stems because, formally speaking, they are the most complex. They have both the zero grade and the guna of their stem. 
So, for example, of a masculine I stem noun such as agni, meaning fire, we get agni as the stem, but also agni. Agni ends in a zero-grade vowel e. Agni ends in the guna of e. So agni, in a way, is zero-grade. Agni is guna. The guna stem agni furthermore appears as agni only before consonants. Before vowels, it appears as agnai. The singular of masculine short I stem nouns has many irregularities and therefore it is best approached just by rote learning. So let's look at the forms one by one. In the nominative and accusative singular, we get agnich and agnim. This basically is parallel to what we find in masculine short A stem nouns such as narach, there we get narach and naram. The vocative singular has just the stem, but the stem in guna, so we get agni. This is loosely parallel to what we find in short A stem nouns. There we had, for example, of narach, the vocative nara, but that was just the vocative, no change in stem or anything like that. Here we have the vocative, but in guna, so agni. The instrumental singular does something that we've already seen in neuter short I stems, and that is it adds an N between the stem and the ending, and so we get agni na. In the dative, we get the ending E that we already know from other dative singulars, but this E is added to the guna of the stem, and specifically to the pre-vocalic form of the guna, and so it's agnai E. Agnaye. Ablative and genitive also use the guna form of the stem, so we get agni. And added to that is an ending that in a way we already know, namely ach, the ending for ablative and genitive singular that we already know from other consonant stems. But here this ach doesn't appear in guna, ach, but it appears as zero grade ch. So agni, stem in guna, plus ch, ending in zero grade, agni. And finally, the locative singular is agnau, and this au has nothing to do with e whatsoever. It's something that we simply need to memorize. So the singular agnich, agne, agnim, agnina, agnaye, agnich, agnich, agnau. On to the dual. In the nominative, vocative, and accusative, we have agni. So instead of short e, we have long e, agni. Instrumental dative ablative dual is perfectly straightforward and recognizable. It's just agni plus our ending piam that we've seen many times before. In the genitive and locative, then, we have the ending och that we also already know added straight on to the stem agni. But what's happening here is that in front of the o, which is a vowel, the i does what we've seen i do's in such a position many times before. Namely, it changes into its semi-vowel equivalent y. And so the genitive locative dual is agniur. Then in the plural, we have a nominative and vocative form agnaiach, which contains the ending ach that we already know for nominative and vocative plural, but it is added to the guna of the stem and specifically, of course, to the pre vocalic guna, which is agnai. And so nominative vocative plural is agnaiach. The accusative agnin again is basically parallel to the accusative plural of masculine short a stems where we had naran here we have agnin then instrumental has straightforward agni plus the ending bich dative and ablative has straightforward agni plus the ending biach then the genitive plural is agninam Again, parallel to short A stems, where we have, for example, naranam. Here we have agninam. And then the locative plural, again, has straightforward agni plus the ending su, which we already know from many locative plurals. But here, as before, through ruki, the su is changed into shu, and therefore we have the locative plural agni shu. Finally, feminine short I stem nouns. These are identical in their endings to their masculine counterparts, but with three exceptions. 
Let's look at a sample paradigm, namely that of Mati, which is a feminine short I stem noun meaning mind. In the singular, we start with Matich, Mati, Matim, which is completely parallel to Agnich, Agni, Agnim. But then we come to the first difference, and that is in the instrumental singular, we do not find an N added in between stem and ending, but we find the ending added straight onto the stem, giving us Matya. This is Mati plus A, and through internal Sandhi, we get not Mati, A, but Matya. Then, in the dative, ablative, genitive, locative singular, we come to the second difference, and that is that we can get feminine forms that are completely parallel to their masculine counterparts. So we can get mataye, matich, matich, matau. But we can also get forms that look much more similar to long I stems, so to stems that are always feminine. So we get matyai, matyach, matyach, matyam which is basically parallel to the forms of nadi, which would be nadiai, nadiach, nadiach, nadiam. Then in the dual, feminines are completely parallel to their masculine counterparts. So just as we had agni, agni piam, agnioch, here we have mati, mati piam, matioch. Then in the plural, we start out again parallel to masculines. We get matayach, just as we had agnayach. But then in the accusative comes the third difference, and that is that the accusative plural ends not in in, but in ich. Compare this to a stems. There we had the masculine short a stems ending in an, naran, accusative plural, but feminine long a stems ended in ach, for example, se nach. So an and ach. Here we have in in the masculines and ich in the feminines. The rest of the plural is completely parallel to the masculines again. So we have matibich, matibiach, matibiach, matinam, and matishu, once again with su changing into shu due to rookie. That, you will be delighted to hear, was it as far as new forms are concerned. But let's briefly look at one specific feature of the meaning of feminine short I stem nouns, and that is that most of them actually are abstract nouns formed by adding the suffix ti to a verbal root in zero grade. So, for example, on the basis of ni to lead, we get niti, which literally means leading and is used to mean guidance, so leading of others, and conduct, especially moral conduct, i.e. how you lead yourself. On the basis of man, to think, we get mati, meaning thinking or thought or mind. Um, remember that of man, we have the zero grade man, and when we combine that with ti, we get minti, which means that the n, the nasal, comes to stand between two other consonants. And whenever that happens, a nasal doesn't remain as a nasal, but it changes into a. And so we get not minti, but mati. We get um, more internal sandhi, and this sandhi mostly affects the t of the suffix ti. And it's the same Sunday of the as we've also encountered elsewhere, for example, in chapter eight, where we were introduced to the suffixes ta and twa and tum. So, for example, on the basis of drish to see, we get drishti, sight or appearance. What happens here is that the palatal sh and the dental t are combined and both of them change into their retroflex counterparts. So we get drishti, meaning sight. And on the basis of vrd, meaning to grow, we get vrdhi. What happens here is that um, dh is a sound that is both voiced and aspirated, and it passes on both its voice and its aspiration to the t at the beginning of t, changing that into dhi. And in front of the dhi, the first d loses its aspiration, and so we get word d. This means growth, and yes, that is exactly the form that we know as a technical term in zero grade guna and word d. That was it as far as I stem nouns are concerned. Now let's briefly look at u stem nouns. 
As was mentioned at the beginning of this chapter, these are formed completely in parallel to short I stems, both as far as their endings and their stem changes are concerned, and they also have the same internal sandhi. So wherever the I in a short I stem noun appears as an I, the U in a short U stem noun appears as, uh, as an U. So for example, on the basis of Dhanu, which is a masculine short U stem noun meaning bow, as in bow and arrow, we have Agnich and Dhanuch. Wherever the I changes into a long I, the U changes into long U. So we have accusative plural Agnin and Dhanun. Wherever the e changes into its semi-vowel counterpart y, u changes into its semi-vowel counterpart w. So we get genitive locative dual agnioch and danwoch. Wherever we get guna of e, namely e, we get guna of u, namely o. So for example, in the vocative singular agne and dano. Wherever we get the pre-vocalic form of the guna, so i we get the pre-vocalic form of the guna av. So, for example, nominative vocative plural, agnayach and danawach. The locative singular masculine ending of short U stems is au, so we get agnau and danau. Notice that in U stems there is one particular form that has certain potential for confusion, and that is that the ablative genitive singular is danoch, so with the stem in Gunnar and the ending in zero grade, Danoch, but the genitive locative dual forms are Danwoch, with Danu plus the ending Och, Danwoch. If you would like to see a full table of short U stem nouns, then look either in chapter 26 of the book or in the appendix. Having looked in great detail at I and U stem nouns, let's also briefly take an explicit look at I and U stem adjectives. Now, generally, I and U stem adjectives are formally identical to nouns of the same gender. That means that the forms of I stem masculine adjectives would look identical to those of I stem masculine nouns and so on. There are two exceptions to this, though. First of all, concerning neuter both short I and short U stems. Wherever neuter nouns add an N in between the stem and the ending, neuter adjectives may do the same, or they may also take the same forms as the masculine. So, for example, of guru, meaning heavy or important, we can get a dative singular neuter guru ne that looks just like a neuter noun in that case, or we may also get the form gurawe, which would be parallel to the masculine short U stem form in the dative singular. The second exception concerns specifically feminine short U stem adjectives. These may be formally identical to feminine short U stem nouns, but they may also appear as long I stems and therefore be declined like nadi. So, for example, from guru, meaning heavy important, the feminine stem may either be just guru or it may be gurwi. That was it for this chapter. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you have any comments or suggestions, we would love to hear from you. Please do write to us at ruppel at cambridge-sanskrit.org. And now... For your own work on this material, good luck and have fun.